Let's take a look at customer class. If I go to my sales area page and go to setup and click on customer class, it opens up the customer class setup. Let's take a look at one I've set up already. Here's a customer class I use quite a bit. And the reason I use customer classes is really three reasons. What I'm doing is I'm grouping all my customers of a like nature into one little group. So this has three benefits to it. One is that when I'm entering new customers, if I assign the new customer to this customer class, that new customer will inherit all these values as defaults on their customer card. A second reason is when I'm doing reporting and I want to report on a particular class, I can just select that class and all customer activity for customers belonging to that class will be in my report. A third reason is if I make a change to a group of customers, for example, say I want to change the payment terms. If I change the payment terms and then save that class, it's going to ask me if I want to roll down these changes to all the customers in that class. If I do, it becomes an easy way to change all the values for all the customers in that class. So you can see that I've got a number of values for each customer class. A lot have to do with credit. I've got payment terms in here and taxes as well. And there's others, you can see those. Uh, but then one of the important things here is the maintain history. I've got four selections here. I want to make sure that I've got all four of these checked in my system. Also, you want to make sure that you set up at least have one default customer class. So this makes it easier to add additional customer classes in the future. Because when you go to add a new customer class, these values will default in to that new customer class. You would of course, override those if you want to. Another important value on here are the accounts. In Dynamics GP, all transactions are going to need general ledger accounts to be coded to that particular transaction. So I might have sales transactions that have items in there and customer information, and I want to make sure that it gets coded properly into my GL. So the way to do that is to have these GL accounts associated to a particular class, which then has those organized to a particular customer. So this makes it easy to set up that structure within my system. So a real easy way to get started in accounts receivable is to set up one customer class at least. So when you add all your new customers, they go to that particular class. It makes it easy to change things. So for example, say I have 100 customers that I import into my system. If I assign them to a class and I need to change one of those values, it's easy to do. I can just go to the class ID, change the value, and then roll that down to all the customers within that particular class. You'll also see similar functionality in the inventory system and also in the payable system. I can have inventory classes and vendor classes. And again, this is a way to organize those records to make it easy for data entry and also for updating and reporting. So if you're not using customer classes, you really should. It's an easy way to get started. In fact, I would recommend it as one of the first things you do is set up at least one customer class so you can add all your customers to that class. If in the future you need to make a change, it's easy to do for all those customers because you can just change the value on the class and have those roll down to the customers within that class.